Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, Lone Star Mopars. You're probably asking yourself, what in the world is going on here? Well, tell you what, cool thing when you're working on a truck, anything you take off of it that would typically be floor space or shelf space or leaning against a wall or just in your way, you got a bed in the back and you just throw whatever you want to in there. So we got all sorts of stuff. We got antifreeze soaked carpet, we got windshield washer fluid, uh, we got Antifree <laughs> Challenger, I haven't got a dump yet. Uh, we got exhaust manifolds, fan shrouds, radiator hoses, cold air intakes, and more importantly, we've got some new parts. Uh, those new parts you're going to be taking a look at in this video, and I'll tell you, I did not intend to be doing this tonight. I would have like probably at least had a quick standalone for one of these items that I'm really proud of. Not that it's anything special or crazy, but just I love them. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about that in a second. But long story short, uh, there I was, I was uh, trying my uh, ZD because I accidentally ordered tea. I'd never had it before in my life, but turns out it was pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, just about done, and I got a text from the uh, machine shop. This is, you know, I was eating supper my time, you know, 8.50, keep that in mind. So I uh, wasn't expecting anything. It turns out the camshaft came in. That's what we were waiting for. Uh, not talking about that just yet, but uh, anyway, things are going together, and uh, that was pretty much our holdup point right there was a the camshaft so uh, in the meantime I've been bringing in some parts and uh, this is what we're gonna cover so <laughs> most of this is gonna be from Hughes and Rock Auto again I would have had like more concise coherent videos but you know it is what it is I work with what I've got so uh, while I was bringing everything in this is one of those kind of lame add-on items right I was looking at the let me come down here tailgate talk time right <laughs> I was looking at the uh, 5.2 on the stand, right? And I thought, man, you know, that distributor hold down sucks. Or actually, it wasn't on the stand. It was loose. And I was thinking, man, that, uh, that thing is disappointing. And uh, needless to say, I thought, you know what? When I was ordering this, it was just one of those things that dawned on me. I was like, well, let's get a better hold down. So uh, this is nothing special. It's just a chrome distributor clamp. But again, it'll keep mine intact as is. I don't have to clean it or anything. And it was cheap. So uh, Hughes part number 7112. I'll try to remember to link all these for you. Uh, jumping now to Rock Auto, something that I believe the machine shop needed. I have that nice OEM water pump. And I think they've already sourced one. So uh, that was way back before I knew I was going to be pulling a motor. Uh, that's when all this Rock Auto came in too. So uh, in terms of uh, your water pump tube, this is pretty much it. Dorm and that's about the only one I could find so that's what we're with and uh, hopefully it'll work uh, right here this is just the uh, coolant bypass hose I went with gates on everything I did uh, belts idler you know I got all new stuff when I was again just thinking I was gonna do the water pump and maybe pop the freeze plugs out but like I said things tend to snowball sometimes <laughs> and uh, that would be the part number there again this would be rock auto I'll try to remember to link it uh, from what I understand going with the air gap intake which you've already taken a look at this works I think you just have to trim it back a little bit how much I don't know because I haven't mocked it up but uh, it is there it is available it is ready to go <laughs> and then right here this is something I'm gonna talk to him tomorrow and I'm gonna see if they can maybe hold off on throwing this thing together uh, I've got to order my headers I guess tonight I was waiting for my charge card uh, to confirm they got my payments because uh, didn't really have enough money to buy anything short of you know like a couple of value mill somewhere so we were sort of in dire straits but this is just a water neck it is gates on it as well uh it's got that stupid dorky little tab right like your factory piece would have i'm leery of anything aftermarket but when you can't get oem in cases like this i try to go with a reputable brand uh, the problem is, when I bought this, which was a long time ago, I was unaware that there was actually a decent billet solution. Uh, obviously, you could do LA stuff, but you know, it's not going to have a long neck. Uh, it's going to be like traditional hot rod style, like 360, 440 type stuff. Uh, there is a long version uh, that I did not know existed. It's available at JEGS. <laughs> and uh, since Summit never seems to do the freaking, you know, uh, ten dollars off a hundred fifty off five hundred and you know those promotions they ran like every other week they haven't done one since like spring break this is june now uh, i think i'm just gonna run with jegs and uh well they do their promotions and they actually have a billet water neck so i'll see if they can maybe hold off on that came with a gasket or what it's worth i don't know how many of these water neck gaskets i have now uh, between all the parts we've been bringing in. Not a bad thing. Uh, it's just uh, got to remember to store them and then remember when I need them that I have them, uh, which is probably going to be the issue, aside from then locating them if I should remember we have them. 
now the uh, big ticket items from Hughes. Let's start with this one because it's kind of disappointing. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's really not a performance option in terms of this item for a 5.2 or a 5.9 Magnum. And that's important because Magnum in those cases is going to indicate that it's like a truck engine, right? Ram, Dakota, Durango, Cherokee, whatever. <clears throat> this is uh, this is the oil pan that I brought in. It's apparently better than uh, what the uh, donor engine had, right? But uh, I can already tell it's I don't know that just bothers me. I'm pretty sure it's five eighths on the uh, factory. That doesn't seem to be five eighths, but uh, we will make do. I can always change the plug out. The main thing, if this is flat, if this seals, that's all I could ask for it to do. Uh, I can't remember Mylodon. Someone had one, but I feel like it wasn't a rear sump pan. I feel like it was a center sump like you'd have in a passenger car. Uh, there's probably places that make them, I would think. <laughs> so, for all intents and purposes, this should get the job done. Uh, sourced it again from Hughes. I have no idea on uh, the manufacturer. I think I asked them if it was OE. It's their part number uh, 6101. And it's stamped SPI, so I assume that's who made it. Uh, interesting thing, if you've never seen a clean oil pan taken off, which this is an awkward camera angle, but you see that little weird thing? <laughs> like, what the heck is that? You know, it's got like tabs coming off of it. That was your thing, and like, I have no idea. You know, what, what terrible design is that? That's where your dipstick tube would go. That's all that is. So, uh, again, typically when people pull oil pans, it's often an assembled engine that's been full of oil uh, or is really, really old, and uh, you don't really get to appreciate little things like that. There is a bit of an overspray there. <clears throat> Uh, they're pretty meticulous. I guess they'll wipe it down. I probably would have done that for them, but I don't really have time now. <laughs> so, uh, there is that. We're trying to uh, go in order of excitement, as it turns out here. And with that said, we're going to step in with this, because it's not as exciting as the next part, or the one after. That's right, we got some really nice cardboard. I'm not quite sure what they're going to do with it. So they said it was important. Uh, in all reality, though, what this is, is it's just protective wrap so we don't flash roast, right? This is a Hughes part number 6303 flex plate, right? And if you're thinking, wait, that's not a, that's not what it should be for you. Well, uh, the 408 is going to be internal balanced. And uh, that, of course, means we don't need an external balance, we need an internal. And this would be 318 spec. So uh, that's what this is. Uh, hopefully she gets the job done again. No flash rusting, which is awesome. But uh, there's a there's a pretty good look at the flex plate. One of the unsung heroes of your uh, you know, uh, running motors, right? So uh, we got that sucker there again. Where and whenever possible, outside of some stuff that had like two month lead times, I try to get this. I try to get Mopar. I try to get OEM. If it's not like performance aftermarket that I'm familiar with and trust. If it's just like generic and no name aftermarket, this is what I look for. This is what I try to do as OE. Uh, case in point, crank position sensors, things like that, where you think, oh, I'm saving 60 bucks. Screw you, Mopar. Yeah, you're not going to save 60 bucks. You're going to buy like four of them, give up, uh, switch to the slightly more expensive brand, realize that it's the same thing after your second attempt swapping it out, and then you're just going to go shell out money and get one that actually works. So, uh, What is this, though? Well, if you note where the label was pulled off, we got a huge part number, and uh, that is CHR530. 20229, that is an OEM internal tampener. Again, nothing crazy, nothing super fancy, but it's pretty nice. And it's in a lot better shape than mine is, just in terms of cleanliness. And uh, there you can kind of see our timing marks. Nothing too crazy, seals seem good. Part number right there, visible, sweet. Uh, flipping it around, you can kind of see the keyway. Seal, that's about all there is to her, right? Uh, so again, unsung hero, but critically important. And we uh, want things to be balanced, otherwise you yeah, have some problems, right? We're not going to run that good, if at all. <laughs> so, speaking of that, for this video, since it is special, I put on the new alphas and uh, try to try to take care of things. Now, this right here, I truthfully would have made a standalone video on. Again, not because it's expensive, not because it's like groundbreaking you've never seen before, but just because I love it. Uh, if I had to say, just definitively, if someone were to ask for whatever reason, bench racing most likely, what is your favorite and why? Uh, this would be it. And uh, it wouldn't be it just for the Magnum. 
and they would be it for the old school LA motors. It would be it if I had a 340 sitting around, if I had to take you under the hood of another vehicle. If I had to just pick out what my favorite one of these was, ones was, it would be this design. And uh, this is kind of special just because how hard these are to find. <laughs> and, uh, if I drop it down right here, you're like, hmm, most of you can probably, if you're watching this and you're not from strictly the tool side, you're like any, any interest at all in the truck, uh, you're like, hey, well, the valve cover is sweet. What did you get? Well, uh, case in point right here, if you did not know, you can in fact run LA valve covers on a Magnum. Uh, the issue there would be well, twofold. Number one, you'd probably want to do it for two reasons. Number one, you have a lot wider selection. You have a better assortment to choose from. Number two, in addition to a better selection, you can get them for a better price. There's simply more of them. There's more demand for them. Uh, it's not the case with the Magnum. Now, the trade-off is the thing that you're probably not thinking of. LA, we have five five what five bolt holes right so you'd essentially have like this corner you'd have one in the middle one over there this one and the other one right so it'd be basically the middle point right here and a corner would make a triangle and then you replicate that on the other side some people can get you know 340s 360s 318s 273s to seal other people can't. So I've never really had issues uh, with the uh, LA valve covers. It really comes down to how good of a machine surface this is. Uh, if you have like a good, again, machine surface or rail on your valve cover, if they're stamped, for example, you could have waves in it. Uh, and then, of course, a lot of that can be overcome simply with a good set of gaskets. Uh, it's not a place you want to skimp out, particularly if you go the stamped route. You tend to have more issues there as opposed to something like this. But uh, one of the big improvements, it sounds lame, but one of the big design changes from the old school LA to the Magnum we're going fuel injection, we're like, oh, let's kick some things around, hydraulic rollers, you know, all that stuff. But going from a 5-bolt valve cover design to a 10-bolt, the factory addressed, you know, what would be a knock, a concern, a weakness. And uh, it's just a simple case. Uh, 10 bolts in this fashion, 5 on the top, 5 on the bottom. It's going to seal a little better than a 5-bolt valve cover. So, uh, again, take that for what you will. Again, good machine surface, caskets your home free. Uh, if you're having trouble with that, you, know, you swap over. This might solve your issue with the same set of gaskets. It just kind of depends what you're what you got going on. Uh, that said, these have been discontinued. These are getting harder and harder to find. That's why I'm so proud of them. Number one, I love them. Number two, they are getting hard to find. I actually got these for a decent price. At least I felt I think it was around like 80 80 85 a piece uh did not know at the time but it came with the baffles that's what these plates are you're looking at uh no grommets none of that stuff that was also going to be part of the video i need to order those uh i finally after years and years of messing with it on the duster uh figured out what works i think it's a ford part number um yeah, it's a real complicated story but let's just go ahead and flip these over so you can take in the sights and the sounds of what I consider to be one of the best looking valve covers of all time. Right there, that's your money shot. This is what sets the Magnums apart. Obviously, you're going to have 10 bolt holes instead of 5, which is one denotation. But the second thing, where these typically just have the Pinastar and Mopar centered, this has some extra space and it has Magnum underneath it. Now, to me, that's important because, again, the truck, that's a 5.2 Magnum, right? Uh, if you got it, if you're a Dakota, Durango person, a Ram person, uh, non Cummins, mind you, that's kind of cool. If you're a fan of the motor, if you're not like doing something stupid like putting an LS or some junk like that in there, if you're staying true to form, you're not throwing a 440 in it, you're not doing you know, a uh, late model Hemi dropped into it, if you're sticking with what the factory gave you, uh, whether you're upgrading from a V6, whether your 318 is going to a 360, uh, whether you're coming in and you're just taking a truck with no motor and you're going to drop in a 5.9 Magnum, this is how you would best pay homage to the motor that was originally in this era of vehicle, right? Uh, and I don't know. I mean, some people will hate these. Some people will love them. And again, in my opinion, this is one of the best looking valve covers ever. <laughs> And, uh, that's why I like them. That's why I run them. That's why I really wanted them. I was kind of sad because I was having a super hard time finding these things. Uh, there for a while, you know, like they just kind of got liquidated. You know, you're sort of like, oh, well, you know, there's no 
no Magnum people left anymore, right? It's just people getting them, you know, like fifth hand trash junked vehicles or something. Everyone's doing the Emmy, and it's, you know, this is one of the few things, slash performance, slash aesthetic upgrades that came from the factory. And they dropped them, you know, they're no longer in production. And, uh, I was very, very stoked to get them. So, <laughs> this is one of those things. Uh, if I had, you know, like an unlimited supply of money, or if we ever hit it big on YouTube, you know, some people go out and buy vacation houses and crud. You know what I would do? I would buy a really nice pegboard. I would probably powder coat it blue, and I would come in and I would hang valve covers like this because I would think it looks cool. I mean, that's the type of stuff I'd put in the living room. <laughs> you know, uh, to each their own. But that's that's how high, highly regarded. I hold these valve covers, so there's really nothing special about them aside from I love them and I think they look awesome and now they're going to go under the hood of the truck, which is a perk. <laughs> so uh, this is stuff way back in the day when I get the old uh, Mopar Performance Catalog sent out, right? Which I think I have the last one they ever mailed. Uh, you go to that tiny, tiny section for the Magnum. This is one of the few things they had in there. Always wanted them, but it was one of those deals. You know, the truck is a daily, it's not modified, it's not leaking. Uh, you could certainly do it and appreciate it when you're under the hood or pop the hood or whatever, but it wasn't really a needed expense, if you will. And uh, now I have a pretty good reason to pick them up, so I did. <laughs> uh, that's my story, and I'm going to stick to it. Now, something that may buzzkill some of you, these, again, I did not do this. I didn't put the baffles in. I didn't knock anything out. These have, usually this is open, you know, for your twist, uh, twist on cap, twist on breather, something like that. And then this side on an old car, you know, you like pop out and put a breather in, right? PCV valve, whatever. Uh, some people, you know, run them in different configurations. With the Magnum, I guess what I'm going to do, bring in the fill caps. This is how I have the duster set up, two fill caps in these slots. And then I guess the uh, PCV on one side and then just a little... I actually don't know if it's a PCV or a breather. I guess it's kind of irrelevant. Uh, but it runs, you know, this one's over here, <laughs> runs back to the intake. And then this one, I think, would be, I say intake, I mean manifold. And then the other one actually runs to your intake tube. Uh, factory, if you've got the factory air box, that rubber hose at the top actually drops down and runs to one of these. So there's no real, like, old school breather, if you will, uh, on a Magnum. At least not a 2001 5.2 that I have. Uh, maybe earlier in the production they did it. I'm not sure. But uh, bottom line, this gives me the options to do what I want to. It's just finding grommets to fit these can prove to be challenging. If you search for it, you'll find a million threads on it. Very few people follow up with this stuff. And what's crazy, uh, you tend to have better luck, you know, like finding answers for stuff like this. Not on, you know, a uh, truck-based site or something late model, uh, but rather like the A-body guys, right? Uh, sort of your uh, Mopar, Mopar backyard engineer crowd. And uh, like I said, I think I finally figured it out. I think it was a Ford number and a fit great. Uh, there's a couple of couple of old tricks like that. <laughs> so we'll have to see. I was going to mic these and have everything figured out again. I was going to have all the parts, uh, the oil fill cap, what I was going to do with the PCV or a breather, or, you know, if I'm going to run a catch can, the lines, all that I would have had mocked out for you. Uh, but again, I've got to get these to the machine shop because the ball is rolling. <laughs> And uh, the sooner I get them there, the sooner they can be put to use. And once these are on, that means heads are on. That means your rockers are in. That means the cam's there. That means we're about ready to dyno that thing. So uh, pretty stoked about that. But that's it. That's it for this tailgate talk. Again, my apologies. It's kind of just hodgepodge of stuff. <laughs> it's just the way it worked out. Uh, so we got this miracle score here for the Magnum specific valve covers. Uh, we got some uh, pretty key engine parts. Obviously oil pan. There's nothing special spectacular about it but it's vitally important uh, the balancer the flex plate sort of unsung heroes you never really think about them you know but they're critically important uh, then just kind of some mundane cooling system stuff here that hopefully doesn't suck that's what I'm gonna say about that uh, if I can I don't know that I'll be able to like crank a video out for you maybe I'll at least get a picture before we install it but if I'm able to score that billet one and uh, have it uh, have it installed on the machine shop. I guess what I'll do when we get the motor back or we're dynoing it or something, you'll see it. Uh, and then when I get it back here, I actually won't have a hose on it, right? So you'll get to get to appreciate it at that point in time. But that sucker right there, I've checked it. It seems relatively flush, so I'm just gonna run with that. But uh, it is hot in here. The toughest thing I've got to do 
is fit all of this into the back of the Challenger because again, my truck is here and I, I can't use it to, to haul parts to the machine shop. It's very strange, very, very awkward. Usually, you know, like if I'm building something, you know, the charger, the dust or whatever, uh, short blocks, long blocks, transmissions, rear axles, all this crud. I mean, this is nothing. You know, you're going to haul an oil pan, valve covers, an intake manifold and some miscellaneous crud. It takes up like a corner in the bed. Well, when your truck doesn't have a motor, I'm telling you, now put yourself in my shoes. If you ever are in that unfortunate position and your truck is down and you're trying to get her going and you're having, you know, like frequent the machine shop, you got to haul stuff in your car. <laughs> and, uh, that rear strut brace bar, man, I love it, but you no, know, it gets, uh, it cuts down on my usable trunk space a bit. So uh, I may have to pull a toolbox or two or something. I don't know, but, uh, it's not pictured here, but the uh, air gap, that's something else I've got to run down to the machine shop. So uh, tomorrow morning, I'll be dropping valve covers, oil pan, balancer, flex plate, miscellaneous cooling stuff, and of course, uh, the Hughes air gap. So uh, that'll be going on. Uh, shouldn't be, like I said, too much longer. I think dyno days are Saturday. I don't know if that'll be this Saturday or maybe the next Saturday, but it sh should be coming up pretty soon. So uh, with that said, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned a little something. Again, if I remember, I will attempt to link all this stuff down below for you. And uh, like I said, anything I bring in upgraded over these, if I don't get to make a standalone, I'll try to get pictures and I will try to then recap it before we drop the motor in, when you can actually see it and appreciate it. So, uh, LoneStarMopars.com is the website. If you are not already, I encourage you to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at LoneStarMopars. Uh, I'm not sure you're going to see this a long time from when I'm recording it. <laughs> it's, uh, I may be running, you know, like Ram Revival specific stuff. I'm not 100% sure yet. I've got it all in place. I just I haven't made it currently. So, because uh, right now the video that just dropped Tuesday, it was uh, me pulling the radiator and the uh, air intake. <laughs> so uh, there's there's a lot of a lot of ground yet to cover that you haven't seen. So uh, that said, it's kind of it makes it hard for me to kind of know how to phrase things because you don't want to spoil anything. But then I don't think this will, and it's it's so far off when you'll actually see it. Uh, realistically, I should probably release more than one a week. But hey, it is what it is. It'll cover for me if I get busy. So I do hope you are enjoying. I hope you're excited about the uh, truck coming together as much as I am. I'm just excited to drive it. Uh, let alone, you know, like have it be, I'll say this, considerably, <laughs> very considerably upgraded from where we left off. So uh, no spoilers on that front. That'll be more like dyno or post dyno video or something. But uh, Alpha Gloves have held up great for me. I've actually taken uh, this pair back to work, like the beat up pair that I would have here. Uh, they've yet to fail. I had to do that because the uh, Milwaukee's and a couple others I were testing were just shredded completely <laughs> so uh, these are the ones I will be rocking at work but uh, like I said I keep these clean bust them out for special videos like this so uh, if you like the gloves though there is a discount code I make nothing off of it I'm just trying to get you gloves that don't suck for a good price uh, but with that said I will quit rambling <laughs> once again thanks so much for watching uh, any thoughts any first-hand feedback on these items uh, feel free to let me know uh, Keep in mind, if you tell me, don't run that Gates Waterneck, that oil pan, that's the same one I bought and it was a piece of trash. I sincerely appreciate that, but you got to understand, like, when you see it on the motor and I then complain about maybe the pan leaking, just realize, you know, like, this was recorded way in advance. And that's not that I forsake your first-hand feedback. Uh, it's that I didn't know it at the time because uh, I, I haven't perfected time travel yet. When the motor gets in, we might. I'll tell you that. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely be rotating the earth. But uh, on that note, hopefully, hopefully you're uh, excited as I am. I'll quit rambling. i got to load this in the car, and that's going to be quite, quite the challenge. <laughs> so once again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all back here for more action in the Ram Revival.